Hi friends, <clears throat> I'm here to show you how to draw a proportionate portrait. Um, this is what we did when we had our virtual day today on Friday. Um, it is 2.25, it's Friday, uh, not 2.25, like 2 o'clock. It is February 25th. We had a virtual day today and we were working on a proportionate portrait. So here's one that I did in class for my period four. This is probably my most successful one um, that I've been working on. <clears throat> I'm using a piece of mail grab what you have around the house um i'm drawing right now on a schedule or I, it's maybe an attendance sheet i'm not sure um but i'm using a copy sized piece of paper and this is what we're going to draw our portrait on today i'm also going to use a pencil but you can use what you have if you have a crayon if you have a marker colored pencil whatever you have lined paper maybe you have a sketchbook you can totally do this in a sketchbook um, but not everybody has that so i'm going to be doing my drawing on a printout that i had in my book bag uh, we're going to start our proportionate portrait by talking about what proportionate means so the word proportionate um, <clears throat> means that um, the portions like the facial features are equal and balanced okay it's not going to look like a cartoon sometimes cartoons have really giant eyes and then smaller mouth and nose features and they're not really balanced or realistic our drawing is going to be more realistic that's what proportionate means if i put the word disproportionate in the front of that it would mean that it's not balanced or equal um, and it might look like a caricature like you get drawn at like dorney park um, it might look like a Bratz doll or a cartoon, something like that. So we're going to be pro looking at proportionate. <clears throat> what we're going to do first is going to decide um, what head shape we want. Everybody has different head shapes. Um, some people have longer faces. I have a very long face, very long jawline. So I'm going to draw my head shape very similar to an egg, very similar to an egg, where it's going to be a little bit like pointier here at the bottom. Um, of the egg, that's going to be our chin area, and then our upper part of our head, where our hair goes, it's going to be a little bit wider, okay? So that's how I'm going to start my head. I'm using a pencil so that I can erase, but you can use what you have, okay? Um, next, we're going to look at the word contour lines. So contour lines are lines that um, curve or wrap around uh, a shape to make it look 3D, to make it look like it has form. Because our because our heads are spheres, um, they're not flat like a pancake. And the other word is line of symmetry. So if something is symmetrical, it means um, it's even or the same on both sides. <clears throat> so if I draw my line down the center of my face vertically, I should have an eye, an eye, a nostril, a nostril, an ear, an ear. So that makes it symmetrical. This vertical line is called the line of symmetry. Okay, there are a lot of things in nature that are symmetrical. Insects like a butterfly. Um, what else? Flowers are very symmetrical. Most flowers are um, and plants in general. Uh, they might not grow in a symmetrical way, but like the flower itself is usually um, pretty symmetrical. So I'm going to draw that that con contour line down the center. It kind of wraps. You can see that it kind of curves. And I'm going to do the same thing horizontally. I'm going to draw a horizontal line, dividing my uh, egg shape in half. Again, I kind of curved it. Okay. Um, then what we're going to do is we are going to make our eyes five eyes wide. Okay. So I'm going to start by drawing an eye shape or like a football or an almond shape in the middle where those lines intersect. We're not going to keep this there forever. Uh, then we're going to draw another eye. So proportionately speaking, if I was going to, if I were to draw a face and it's proportionate, I would have um, my face and it would be five eyes wide. Okay. So there's one, two, three, four, five we're going to keep these two. These are just to help us with placing and spacing. Placing and spacing. Um, and now what I can do is I can erase those and I can start adding those details that I practiced on my facial feature um, practice activity we did earlier this cycle or earlier this week. Um, so that's where my eyeballs are going to go. 
and they're very just outline basic shapes but now I'm going to start adding like the pupils when I add one thing to one eye I go over and I do it to the other eye right away so that I can kind of keep them similar now our eyes aren't identical they're not twin siblings they are um, sisters or brothers you know they're not going to be twins so that's what I'm trying to achieve now I can use my videos that I posted in that assignment on how to draw eyes. Uh, the assignment I'm referencing is the facial feature practice. I have the videos, I have the step-by-step -step, um, pictures on how to draw eyes. You can draw them in whatever style you want. We just want to remember to keep them proportionate to the, the head right now because we're working on a proportionate drawing, meaning it's balanced, it's going to look a little bit more realistic, Okay. Um, next, we're going to take our eye line and our chin, and we're going to divide that in half. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw that little line. That's going to be our nose line. Um, our nose is going to go here, our little like ball or point of the nose, the little tip of the nose. Uh, we're going to draw that first, and that goes where those two lines intersect. And then I'm going to draw parentheses for the nostrils. I might even add my little nostril holes. This part of the nose is very triangular. You might see me kind of sketch a triangle there. Um, that's just my preference on drawing noses. I just show you things that are successful. That doesn't mean you have to do them um, my way. I'm just showing you one successful way. I give suggestions and you make decisions. Um, so there's my nose. I'm gonna come back and add some shading to that later. Um, your nose uh, will, follow the bridge of your nose if you use your fingers and feel that's going to go up your bridge and it's going to come up to your eyebrow or your brow line they call that uh, so this is going to kind of come up here and this is going to help me with eye like my shapes of my eyebrows your person that you're drawing might have glasses and some of that eyebrow uh, might get hidden maybe they have bangs or long shaggy hair um, but you still want to kind of put them in there in case a little bit um, peeks through whatever your design is that you draw. Okay. Again, sisters, but not twins. They're similar, but not identical. All right. Definitely have some adjusting to do and that's okay. Uh, now I'm going to divide my nose line and my chin in half. And that's going to be where my mouth goes. My mouth is like the corners of my mouth line up with the centers of my eyes. So I'm going to kind of draw a light line from the center of my eye, and that's going to help me with the area or the corners of my mouth. Now, this line is going to be where your lips meet. Your top lip and your bottom lip are going to meet here. Uh, another trick I could do is I could use these the circle method where I draw a circle here and then two here, and that helps me with my lip shapes. Um, just makes it that I... Have a little guide i can draw a cupid's bow that's when your top lip kind of um, does this little v in the middle or the center your lip also goes into your nose so sometimes i'll shade this in a little bit just to kind of add that little cupid's bow i can erase these circles once i'm done using them as my my guides for placement next is going to come ears um, I do this in a certain way so that I already have these lines and these features done. Ears go from your eye line to your nose line, and they are very much like the letter C or parentheses like we used for our nostrils. They might not be even. That's okay. I know I remember some of the tricks that I learned from my facial feature practice. So I am going to add some of that in here now, like the shading and the little parts of the ear, just to add a little depth, make it look a more realistic and less cartoon-like. All right, now I can do my neck. 
My neck usually comes from the corners of my mouth, and that's how I get the width of my neck. You can play around with the size of a neck, depending on if you think that person's going to be muscular um, or not, how thick or thin you make the neck. And I do drop some shoulders in here because I want to anchor the body. I don't want a floating head. I can add a little collar. I can work on this detail later. Like, what are they wearing? Not sure yet. I might do a hood on this one, on this person. Next is hair. So you're going to kind of mark the center of the head area from the eyes to the back of the head. And your hairline starts at your ears. We have hair that starts at our ears. You want to figure out what kind of hairline your human's going to have. Um, there's something called a widow's peak, and that's when... Um, your hair kind of comes to a point. I have a widow's peak, but you can't see it because I wear my hair in bang, like in bangs in front of my widow's peak. Some people will go to the salon or barber shop and get their hairline kind of shaped up and they'll have a uh, very uh, artistic, maybe square um, hairline. Some people just have a round hairline. Also baby hairs, that's part of your hairline. So you can kind of create what you want with that. I am going to do a round hairline, so I'm going to kind of come up there. And then I'm going to also decide, is this person going to have a hairstyle that is tight to the scalp, like a, a buzz cut, or are they going to have braids or uh, real close curls? It's going to be up to you. This person here, I'm working on braids. If you go into my tutorial uh, slide on facial features, there is a video with a artist who's a woman of color, and she goes specifically into curl types. Um, she also shows you how to shade and add texture to a hair. What I do when I draw hair is I figure out if they're going to have voluminous hair or larger, longer hair, I add the shape first. So you can see here, I drew the shape of the hair and now I'm going in and I'm starting to add that texture to kind of convince my audience, my viewer that it's curly and has some kind of, you know, wave to it. I'm not sure what I want to do for this person. I do know I want to erase this line. I do know that I want to maybe add a little extra volume. I think I might want to go watch that video to figure out what I want to do with my hair. I am erasing this line because I know that my hairstyle that I'm putting on this person isn't going to be a real close um, cut. I think I'm going to do kind of like a shaggy hair, kind of short. Maybe I'll add some bangs. I'm not sure yet. I'm still playing with that. Um, so this is how to draw a proportionate portrait. Once I have my facial features placed and I want to start adding some shading um, or value to create the 3D form illusion, I can erase these guidelines. I don't need them anymore. I can also thin my face down if I need to. If I think my face is too wide, I can add a little bit of contouring with that as well. Once you have this done, you're going to take a photo of this and you are going to submit it on Remind. Um, this is, again, for Friday, December 25th, 2022. And this was our uh, synchronous learning that we did today. All right, friends. Thank you so much. Goodbye.